Hi everyone, welcome to our home. My name is Jane. My husband Pat has been baking bagels for the past four to five years. And today you're in for a treat because he's gonna be sharing his recipe with you. A decent bagel is easy to make, but if you wanna make a great bagel, keep watching and I'll show you how to make a great one. So this recipe makes eight bagels and your first five tips are gonna come at you real fast, so get ready. Tip number one, use a scale. It's imperative that your flour and water are measured precisely. It's really important in baking. I'm not kidding. For the dry ingredients, I'm gonna start with 600 grams of the King Arthur bread flour. Tip number two, use a quality bread flour. This is the King Arthur bread flour. You can see that it has a 12.7% protein content. You want at least that. Flour matters. And to that, I'm going to add the one teaspoon of the diastatic malt powder. Tip number three, diastatic malt powder. This stuff is the fairy dust that bakers use as a secret ingredient to make really crusty breads. Now, you may not be able to find this, but I'll leave a link below where you can get it on Amazon. This stuff is magic. One teaspoon of instant yeast. Tip number four, use an instant yeast. This is the SAF instant yeast. Instant yeast is easy. You just add it to the dry ingredients. If you had to use an active dry uh, yeast because that's all you had, just add the yeast to the water step instead of the dry ingredient step and you'll be fine. About one and a half teaspoons of the sea salt. And once those are all in there, I'm just gonna give this a quick whisk. Now for the wet ingredients, I'm just going to add my two teaspoons of honey, one teaspoon of barley malt syrup to my 342 grams of water. Tip number five, spring water. Don't use tap water. You don't want your chlorine interfering with your yeast. This one is actually sourced from the Eastern Sierras, specifically Mount Whitney. Great water makes great bagels. Okay, we're now ready to mix our dough. And the way that I'm going to start is I'm going to add my wet ingredients first to the bottom of the mixing bowl. And then the flour on top of that. And just mix it for a few minutes on low, just to get the, the dough and the water incorporated. Spend just a couple of minutes uh, mixing the dough. You can see the dough is still a little bit wet and sticky, but comes off the hook pretty easily. It looks just like this, and I'm gonna let that sit for about five minutes. The dough has been resting for about five minutes, and as you can see, it doesn't look a whole lot different at this point. But what I'm gonna start doing now is the kneading. Knead it at a fairly low speed, and this kneading is gonna go for at least 10 minutes. So it's been about 10 minutes kneading in the mixer. The mixer did a great job today. What I'm gonna do is just uh, put it out on my work surface and just give it a quick knead. Yep, this feels very pliable, but as you can see, the dough is not sticking at all to the work surface, and that's exactly what you want with your bagel dough. So now I'm just gonna form it into a quick ball and put it in my mixing bowl uh, where I'm gonna let it proof for uh, anywhere from 30 minutes to an hour. There's a little bit of oil in the bottom of the bowl, and I'm just gonna put that in, give it a good coating so that it doesn't develop a skin on top of it. Then throw some cling wrap over the top, and this is gonna proof again from anywhere from 30 minutes to an hour uh, before we start forming these into a ball and then into our bagel shape. The dough has been resting for about 30 minutes, and now it's time to shape them into bagels. The first step is to divide the dough into eight equal portions. Those portions should be about 120 to 122 grams each. Once they are formed into the portions, I'm going to shape them into little balls. And I use a method where I roll the dough back underneath itself, uh, tucking it into a ball, pinching it at the bottom, and then rolling it finely into the ball shape and placing it on my parchment paper. So the eight balls of dough have been formed. We're just gonna let these rest for a few minutes to allow the dough uh, to relax a little bit before we form them. While we're letting it relax, we're gonna cover it in a piece of saran wrap. And after about five minutes, we'll go ahead and form these into the bagel shape before we proof them overnight. Okay, after the balls have been resting for about five minutes, it's now time to form them. I take my fingers, my thumb, my middle finger on both hands, I punch a hole through the center of the ball, and then I twirl the dough around my fingers until I form 
a hole that's about an inch to two inches in diameter, and then just place it down on my parchment paper. And I'll do that with all eight balls until I'm finished. So again, pinch, twirl, place. The bagels have been formed, and now we're gonna let them proof in the refrigerator overnight. Alternatively, if you don't wanna wait overnight, you can let these proof out on the counter for, oh, maybe about an hour uh, until they've puffed up pretty good, and then you can continue. However, tip number six, allow the bagels to proof in the refrigerator at least overnight. But in this tip, you can go up to 72 hours in the refrigerator. The longer you let your bagels proof in the refrigerator, the better the taste will be. Don't do them the same day unless you really have to because you're cheating yourself out of some great flavor. So it is now the next morning and it is time to boil and bake the bagels. And the way that I start off my morning is I get up, I make a cup of coffee, I let the dog out, and then I turn on the oven to 425. I take the bagels out of the refrigerator in the garage and I let them proof. I also start my water boiling. Okay, so our water is boiling and our bagels have been float tested and we know that they're ready to go. I'm going to add about two tablespoons of kosher salt to my water and I'm going to add an additional uh, tablespoon of the baked baking soda. Tip number seven, baked baking soda. What is baked baking soda? Baked baking soda is a way to increase the alkalinity of your water boil to improve the glossy sheen of your bagels. I'm gonna leave a recipe in the description below that shows you how to make baked baking soda. The water's come up to a boil, so I'm now going to add my first four bagels, and they're gonna just be carefully dropped into the water. And we're gonna let these boil in the water for about a minute and a half to two minutes per side. Tip number eight. How long you boil your bagels makes a difference in how much chewy texture you get in the crust. So some people only boil their bagel for a few seconds. Some people only do one side. But I'm recommending that you do at least a minute and a half per side to get a really chewy texture. It's been about a minute and a half, uh, coming up on two minutes, and I'm just gonna use my wire basket here to flip the bagels gently over. Okay, after the minute and a half to two minutes on the second side, I just fish them out and put them back down on the tray and you can see that not only have they turned a nice honey golden color, but they've gotten quite a bit larger uh, than the other bagels. Get our egg wash. So once their egg wash is on them, we're gonna sprinkle one with sesame. Again, I sprinkle so that I don't damage the bagels. And finally, the last one, I will make an everything bagel. And there we have it. Our first tray with four everything, two poppy, two sesame is ready to get popped in the oven. So I'm going to put them in at the lower rack. And they'll go in for, um, I think I'll put them in for 13 minutes because I left my oven door open for just a little bit. All right, so you heard it. Uh, the oven went off for the first 13 minutes, so let's take a look at this batch. Yep, they're looking awfully good in the oven. We're gonna take them out and move them up to the upper rack, and we're gonna flip the rack around. Now we're gonna get uh, the second batch into the lower rack, let them get nice and cozy warm in the oven, and they're gonna bake now for, uh, we'll do this one for 12 minutes. Wow, that first batch is looking really good. <laughs> yeah, that's some good bagels. Holy moly, those are looking freaking awesome. Another great batch that came out. Since these are plain, we can kind of see the sheen on them. And I will say that the sheen is a little bit better than what I would get with just baking soda. So the baked baking soda does make a difference. This is almost a perfect batch of bagels. So there we go, folks. There we have two batches of bagels. We got eight plain, two poppy, two sesame, and four everything bagels. Okay, so the bagels are done. Uh, this is one of the plain bagels. I just wanted to give it a tap and hear it. 
That sounds pretty good. Let's give it a, a, a little bit of a dimple, see if we get any crackle. Yes, we did. And then let's open it up and take a look at what the crumb looks like inside. But that is a perfect bagel. Oh, that looks really good. Maybe the most important tip I'm going to give you today. Once you've got all your bagels made, the best thing that you can do with your bagels is to share them with others. Family, friends, co-workers. They will love you. Oh. Mm-hmm. So flavorful. It's yummy and it's my favorite. Thank you. Mmm. They're really good. <laughs> I like it. I put cream cheese on it, warmed it up. Mmm. <laughs> Unfortunately, it probably means that you're making bagels for a long, long time. Go ahead and give this recipe a try. I think you'll get great results. Um, I put these bagels up against anything that you get out of a store. They'll hold up really well. Flavor-wise, crunch, um, you can get great results in bagels at home.